starting up, I'll um, introduce myself. Well, most of you know who I am by now anyway. And um, I'd just like to say it's great to be here again. I really like this church. It's very friendly. It's very welcoming. Um, it's, a, it's a privilege to be here. Um, we had a great evening last e uh, yesterday, eating all the different foods from around the world. Yeah, that's fantastic. I couldn't cook Thai food. Sorry about that. If I cooked Thai food, you'd probably never eat Thai food again. So <laughs> it's probably, probably better that I didn't, really. <laughs> but we did have some Thai crackers. I saw one of the kids eating the Thai crackers. Um, authentic Charlotte's. <laughs> okay. Um, as I said, we just have to wait a little bit for this to start up. And then I'll be able to start the presentation. You know, obviously... You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I like to joke with churches when I first start speaking. I like to say I'm obviously from Thailand, and um, people laugh because I'm obviously not from Thailand. Um, but anyway, you know I'm from England, and um, maybe you don't know that my background is is in sort of academic circles. Um, I studied philosophy for seven years. Um, I was at Manchester Metropolitan for four, uh, three years. Or three or four years, and um, studying um, philosophy of the mind um, and um, and then I went on to do philosophy as well at UCL in London um, and I studied philosophy for my MA in London. So I was well and truly grounded, if you like, in, in uh, materialistic philosophy. Um, a sort of an academic subject that really, you know, the existence of God really had no place in that in that field of study. Um, so I was I was really I, I like to joke that I sort of graduated in, with a degree in stupidity, um, <laughs> which I think I probably did. Um, I'm not saying that it doesn't have any value. It does have it does have some value, and and you know the good thing about it is that it, it really taught me to, you know think logically. Um, that was a challenge for me. But anyway, I, that's, I went to Thailand and that was my background. Um, so just, to, just, to, just so everyone's really clear as, as to what the uh, situation was, I was, I was lost um, when I went to Thailand. Um, albeit my mother, my mother, my mother's a Christian and I think through, through, through her influence um, that that gave me a grounding um, in, 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 in the gospel. I, I didn't accept the gospel, but it certainly, it's, it's just starting up, it certainly gave me a grounding and a knowledge of, you know, Jesus Christ and, and what he did. But I rejected it. Um, absolutely, I rejected it. Um, so I went to Thailand and didn't like Bangkok was there for two nights. Horrible place. Very crowded, very hot, um, dirty, muggy, dusty. So I consulted my lonely planet guide. I really wanted to go to a, a really quiet part of, of Thailand and I ended up going to a place on the Thai-Burma border um, and I went to a beautiful waterfall over there um, and I was on a journey on a sort of a rickety old bus uh, with chickens and things like that, all packed in together. And we did a six hour journey north <coughs> along the border up to a town called Mare Sariang. And that's where I met my wife. I was still working for the, I was working for Burmese people actually, I was working for a Burmese group. Because on that, on that journey I met the chairman of this Burmese organisation. Um, this this organisation was a student organisation and they were an armed opposition to the, uh, to the government forces on the other side of the border in Burma. Um, that was, you know, I'm going back, you know, 11, 12 years now. Um, so, so there was still a lot of, you know, cat and mouse battles going on in the jungle. Um, so the chairman of that group asked me, well, you know, would you like to work for us? And I said, well, I'm not very good with a gun. Um, but anyway, he said, well, you can teach English. Okay, that's better. All right, I'd rather do that. So I ended up teaching English for this for this group um, in May Sariang, and 
after about three or four weeks, you know, we were going out with my Burmese friends, and uh, we went. I met this one young Thai lady at one of these restaurants, and I thought, wow, she's pretty. And um, so I asked my Burmese friend, could you could you ask her to sit down? And and um, his name was Zortu, and so he did. And um, so she didn't speak any. English, and I obviously didn't speak any Thai, um, so our conversation was through our Burmese friend, uh, Zortu. So I would say, Zortu, just, just ask her a simple question, you know, where does she live? You know? And then he would talk to her for like half an hour, and I wouldn't get an answer. <laughs> but um, he was obviously enjoying the occasion because he didn't have to pay for any of the food or the drinks, so that was on me. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's, that's how our relationship started. Um, here she is, my wife. Um, her name is Linda. Uh, she actually um, received her name from a Catholic nurse. The Catholic nurse delivered, delivered her. Um, she's the fifth one of five other daughters. So I think by about that time, the mother, my mother-in-law now, she was probably just getting a bit tired of the whole thing and just gave it to this nurse and said, you give her a name. And so the Catholic nurse came back and said, her name's Linda. And that's why she has a very Western name, because Linda's not a Thai name. Um, so I met Linda, and within two weeks of meeting each other, we were married. It seemed like a good idea at the time. And um, it all happened so fast. So I wrote an email to my mum. Hey, mum, I've got some news for you. I'm married. And she wrote back, what are you doing? <laughs> You're crazy. Anyway, um, very early on, our family started to grow. So as much as I liked working for my Burmese friends, um, I needed some more regular, stable income. So we moved to a, um, a town called Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai is in the north of Thailand. Oh, there we go, I missed that slide. I should have introduced that slide when I said, and then we were married. Um, there we go. We're in, it was quite bright there. I look like a ghost or something. Um, <laughs> that's not usually what we wear around the house, by the way. <laughs> this, is, this is traditional Thai, thai um, uh, costume, though. Um, I showed this to my friend the other day. He said, oh, nice picture, Tom. You look like Alibaba's young <laughs> <laughs> and there's our family anyway. Um, our son, his name is uh, Mai. He's just standing there um, by my left arm. And um, he's now 13. I'm holding Elizabeth. She's our youngest. She's, she'll be three next month. Um, my, my wife and then our other daughter, Noni. She's now 10. Uh, so there we go. That's, that's our family. And we, were, we moved to Chiang Mai. Um, as I said, Chiang Mai is, is it's, it's Thailand's second city. And it's 900 kilometers north of Bangkok. Um, so my wife and I, we were in this relationship, this rather strange relationship, where we didn't really understand each other. You know, some people might say, well, that's perhaps why we got married in the first place. <laughs> but the thing is, is that... You know, things were quite hard, even though I found um, some work at a school. Um, things were still quite difficult for us, you know, just through communication problems, cultural differences, um, financial situation, everything was against us. And I think she was Buddhist. I was just, you know, I was, I was really nothing at that point. Still some kind of relic of British you know, philosophy, academia. Um, but I think at that time, that's when the Lord began to work on my heart. I, I began to think, well, you know, our situation, my situation isn't a good one. And I really wanted to know. I really, I really felt at that point in time that, you know, things are out of control. Anyway, I went to Laos on a visa trip to get my visa for the, for the school I work at. And Laos is a small communist country just north of, on the northern border of Thailand. And that is where I went to a second-hand bookshop, bought a copy of the Bible, and I started to read it. And I read the Gospel of John, 
and it was the first time I, I began to read it with an open attitude. You know, I wasn't critical of it. And I thought, wow, this is really, really interesting. And, you know, I prayed and I invited the Lord into my life Amen. without really understanding anything really about, about, you know. I knew that I had to accept Jesus Christ, um, but that's about as far as it went. And so I, I, I went back to Chiang Mai and I said to my wife, I've got some news for you. And she said, oh, what's that? And I said, I'm a Christian. And she looked at me in a rather strange way. And she said, well, I know you're a Christian. I said, well, how do you know I'm a Christian? And she said, well, everyone from England's a Christian. <laughs> so obviously you're a Christian. You're a Christian, I'm Buddhist, right? No, no, that's not how it works. And I tried to explain that I, I, I made a decision to believe in Jesus. Um, she didn't really get it. Um, but anyway, she did notice that my habits had began, began to change. Okay, so, you know, I was reading the Bible um, a lot, and she would notice that, and she would, you know, scratch her head, and she would think to herself, why, why is he so interested in this book? What's in the book that's so, what's, what's in the book that's more interesting than me? <laughs> um, so, I didn't have a copy of the Bible in Thai, but, you know, there we go. I also began to, after she would prepare something to eat, I would give thanks, you know, give thanks to, to, to the Lord for that. And she would say, well, you really should give thanks to me because I cooked the food. <laughs> yeah. so, well, that's coming, you know. And that's a good point. I understand that. <laughs> but she noticed that my behavior had begun to change. And uh, one day anyway, as uh, one day she met a, a Thai lady um, from the same part of Thailand who had um, the scriptures in her own language. And she gave the Bible to my wife so that she was able to start reading. And um, so she began to, you know, she, she saw that this, this book actually answered some of the big questions about, you know, who God is and, and where things come from and things like that. So she began to take a, a big interest. And, um, and so she said that she wanted to become a Christian. I don't know if she was, you know, because of, you know, things that she was reading in the Bible or because she thought, well, now my Western husband is this Christian, maybe I should become a Christian. I don't know what her thoughts were on that. Um, but anyway, we started going to a church in, in town. It was a huge church, very interdenominational thing. Um, we didn't really experience any, any grounding in the faith. Uh, we didn't experience any growth. We were still really as lost as we were to begin with. Um, but anyway, one day in, the, in a market, we met a missionary family who were giving out Bible tracts. And um, one of the tracks was left on our motorbike. It was a Creation to Christ um, correspondence course, which, you know, she could reply to the, to, the, to the missionary, and he would send material. She would re read the material, and then write the answers to the questions to receive, send that back and receive more material. And uh, so she started doing that, my wife. Um, and I think the, the missionary was scratching his head because he was thinking, well... This is strange because he's, he's, he's receiving these responses to the tracks in the post. The, the, the writing is perfect Thai writing, and then it's signed Linda, her Western first name, Britain, her Western second name, Linda Britain. So the missionary was sort of scratching his head thinking, what is going on here? Um, I think he assumed that, okay, there's some young Thai, you know, girl or lady that's that's somehow got in, interested in Christianity, probably married to some overweight, you know, grey-haired expat from Britain who's still living the dream in Thailand. Um, but anyway, my wife invited them around to our house one evening, and here, no, it's a picture of the rice fields. Sorry about that. Um, I'll pick up the story in a minute. This, this picture actually is, is just outside of uh, my mother-in-law's house. Beautiful rice, rice paddies, mountains in the background. We can't really see them there, uh, but there are some beautiful mountains in the background. This is the Thailand that I really fell in love with. You know, before I found out about the snakes and the centipedes. Um, here is a typical sort of Thai, um, Thai temple. 
Um, this is on the mountain, just, just where we live. Um, and you can see the man he uh, on the on the left hand side there. He's sort of bowing down to these idols and you know just worshiping um, the idols here. And obviously, Thailand, like England, is a place that needs missionaries. Um, I put these pictures in because it's difficult to know what to show a British audience. You know, when I'm doing a presentation in Thailand, well, I can have pictures of Big Ben and things like that. And, talk about Britain and they get excited, but obviously everyone here has seen many pictures of Big Ben, so we don't need to do that. So I put some pictures in of um, Thai, Thailand and, and really what the, the Thai people are doing. Um, you'll often see the monks walking down during the, um, during the morning time. Um, people will give alms or give food um, to the monks, um, really to receive a blessing from the monks. They think that by doing that they're going to somehow, you know, the more good things they do, it's going to outweigh the bad things. Um, again, Buddhism, I would say, is very much, once you just scratch under the surface a little bit, it's very much just a works-based way to get saved, really. <coughs> you know, just like every religion. And I'm not talking about the Gospels, because the Gospels are a relationship that we have with Jesus Christ in faith. But, you know, again, the religion is just a system. And if people think that if they do enough good things, then that will somehow outweigh, you know, the bad things that they've done. So you'll often see that um, going on as well in, um, on the Thai streets in the morning. Again, it's a, a spiritually very dark, uh, dark place. Um, but there are missionaries over there doing some good works as well. Okay, so here's a picture of um, the missionary that I was talking about. Um, that my wife was, you know, responding to his his tracts and doing this creation, uh, cr uh, creation to Christ correspondence course in the post. Um, his name is uh, Pastor Michael Frederick from Atlanta in the USA. Uh, there's his wife standing before him. Um, her name is uh, Francis, Mrs. Francis from the Philippines. Um, now she's an American. So one evening about. Ten years ago, maybe ten and a half years ago now, they came around to our house. Um, Linda invited them. And I, I always remember the evening because that was the evening that some, you know, he explained the gospel to me. We opened up the scriptures and he explained the gospel in such clear, you know, crystal terms that, you know, suddenly I understood what God's grace really is all about, you know. It's about Jesus Christ having died for our sins, all of our sins, our past, our present, and our future sins. And that was just incredible, you know, to, 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 to see it from the scriptures. Um, I'll always remember, he asked me a question that night. He said, so Tom, you, you, you say you're saved, you say you believe in Jesus Christ. Um, and then he said to me, you know, can Christians do bad things? I thought, well, well, this is a trick question. Can Christians do bad things? I sort of scratched my head, you know. Um, and then I, I replied, you know, I thought about, you know, the other day, but I probably said a white lie to my wife or something. So I said, yeah, uh, Christians can do bad things. He said, good, I'm glad we've got that straight. And then he said, well, suppose that, that you know, you... We're really angry with your wife one day, and you strangled her. You were so angry, and you killed her. Oh, oh. wow. I thought, well, I'm not going to invite you around again, that's for sure. But anyway, he carried on. Suppose you did that, and then you ran out of the house, shocked at what you had done. You ran over a road, and then whack, you were knocked over by a truck or a car or something like that, and, and you were dead. He asked me straight out, where do you think you would go? I said, oh. Where would I go? Where would, my, where would my spirit go? This really is a trick question. So, I thought about it for a while and I said to him, well, we all know that murder is wrong. It's, it's, it's so bad that it's one of the Ten Commandments. You know, clearly murderers can't go to heaven. So I sort of said, hell? And he said, no. If you've truly accepted Jesus Christ as your saviour, you'd go to heaven, because you'd go to heaven not 
on your merits, what you have done or what you haven't done mm. in this life. But because you accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, mm. by faith you receive his righteousness. Mm. And it's on the basis of his righteousness that you would go to be with the Lord. Mm. Because you're reconciled to God mm. for eternity. And I thought, wow. And then suddenly, I think that, that was probably the time the penny dropped and clipped. You know, suddenly I understood what grace really means. And um, I'll never forget that evening. Ever since then, we became a part of the church. Uh, my wife and I were baptized. Uh, we've been serving in the church that he planted in, um, you know, in Thailand. And it's just wonderful. And so... We grew um, in that church, and you know, we, my wife and I, we had a holiday to England in I think it was 2008 or 2009, and the Lord began to burden our hearts with with missions. Uh, we came to here, and I began to ask questions. You know, how is it possible to grow up in a country like this and not hear the gospel? You know, not hear a clear presentation of the gospel. For 27 years, you know, completely lost, not having heard it. I know that what light was shed in my life, I rejected, willfully rejected. But it wasn't until I was in Thailand, a Buddhist country, that I, I finally heard, you know, a great presentation of the gospel. So my wife and I, we, we talked to one another. And we decided that, okay, let's, 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 you know, let's devote our, our lives, our family life to the Lord. Let's go into missions. Let's prepare ourselves for that. So I studied, studied at my local Bible Institute with my pastor for four years part time. Um, I'm just going to go through this quickly because I'm going to do some preaching too. Um, I presented the ministry in Japan. Um, there we are in Japan. I'm with another missionary there. Um, we're dressed as samurai. Missionaries in Japan they dress as samurais when they have you know a bit of spare time. I don't know what missionaries do in Britain. I presented the ministry over there in March for, for six weeks. Um, I've been presenting the ministry in Thailand, of course. Uh, you can get about on elephants, but it takes a bit of time. We prefer to use cars when we, when we travel. But there we go, we're in a church there with, with, uh, with, uh, with one of the uh, national pastors um, down in Bangkok. Um, and I just put this picture in really to summarize our burden for the UK. Um, you know, here we have a crowded street. Um, we can read the, the, the sign there, Debenhams. That's a classic sort of high street brand. Um, that could really be any British high street on a Saturday morning. Um, the church, inside the church, the pews are, of course, empty. You know, when I think of Britain, you know, I, the last verse of Judges comes to mind. You know, today everyone is just doing that which is right in their own eyes. Um, so we really are burdened to come to England and, you know, preach and teach the gospel. Um, that's, that's our burden. That's what we want to do. We want people to, to understand that, you know, if they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, then they're going to have eternal life. Mm. You know, because that's God's, that's God's promise to us. Mm -hmm. And um, that's wonderful. So that's just to really summarize, you know, who we are, where we're from, what we're about, and what we want to do. And I know it's quite quick, but um, I was going to get on with some preaching as well. So perhaps we could, we could do 